Hello, I'm John Cantor, and I'd like to share with you this little simulator I've made, devised. It's simulating a situation with a radiator and a sort of heating, very simple heating circuit. I'm going to make myself smaller so we can see it. And I'll just show you what it's about. You'll find it on heatpumps.co.uk, and you can go a full page version and just simply play with it to your heart's content. But if you want a bit of explanation, then stay listening. So, OK, let's explain it. This is a standard radiator you get on a central heating system that's normally connected to a boiler, uh, connected through a pipe work and a pump. And in this case, we have uh, we have a circulation pump, but we're on connected to an electric heating element boiler. So it's just an electric element in, in, a, in a water flow. And on the left here, we can change various things. We can change the, the amount of electricity, the power going into that heater. We can change the flow rate. And we can change the radiator size and type. We can also change to Fahrenheit if we're more person with Fahrenheit. So there we have the basic um, outline of the basic thing. So the radiator, uh, let's just go back to sort of default settings. Um, the radiator radiates heat um, and convex heat at the same, roughly the same amount. I don't know why we call them radiators, but we, we do. Um, and what we got on this screen is a few things. We have the return temperature coming back from the radiator. At the moment it's 48 degrees. As it goes through the heat pump, the, sorry, the heating element, the, not a heat pump at all, the um, electric heater, it rises by about five degrees, 4.9 here. That's the delta T, delta meaning the difference in the change in temperature. So it's going up by five degrees. It comes around to here, 53 degrees, goes into the radiator. And as it goes over the surface of the radiator, it's losing heat to the tune of 1.7 kilowatts. And that's at steady state. And that's what will happen if we set this going. The amount of uh, energy going in, the power going in, 1.7 kilowatts will sort of balance out and also give out 1.7 kilowatts and it, the temperature of the radiator will sort of find its own temperature and steady state is reached fairly quickly so we're just assuming that um, a few things here one is that the all of the heat that goes into the electric heater must come out as heat on the radiator a little bit goes to the is, is um, lost from the pipes but it's all lost into the room so it's nothing to worry about. So let's just see what happens when we change various things and see if they seem to make sense. So at the moment, we've got 1.7 kilowatts going into that radiator. So if we turn the power up, what do we expect to happen? Yes, there we are. The radiator is getting hotter. And by getting hotter, it is giving out more heat and it's giving out 28, uh, 2.8 kilowatts. And if we turn it right down, we can turn it right down to almost off um, 100 watts. As we can see, it wouldn't be much um, warmer than the room at 20 degrees. So let's put it back to, what it was, 1.7. And it's a 50 degrees again. Just want to jump down to the uh, room temperature. This isn't a set point at all. It's just the air temperature in the room. Um, yes, yeah, nothing to do with controlling the, the, uh, this model we have here. This is just changing the, the temperature that the radiator is in. Because the amount of heat given off is, depends on the room temperature, the difference in the room temperature, and the radiator temperature. By changing the, the room air temperature, 
we actually change the temperature of the radiator if the amount of heat it's emitting is the same. So let's put that back to 20 degrees again. Um, we'll go to flow rate at the end. Let's just look at the radiator size because we can also change the size and the type. So at the moment, it's at 50 degrees. That's fairly hot. Let's make it smaller. So if we make the radiator smaller, it gets hotter. And that's what we'd expect to see. Obviously, less area is going to get up to a higher temperature. It's got to dissipate 1.7 kilowatts. That's, that hasn't changed. If it's going to dissipate 1.7 kilowatts and it's very small, it's got to get up to 143 degrees which is pretty dangerous. Don't try this at home. That would be um, a, a pressure in the system. Um, now let's go to the other extreme. We've made the radiator very big. You won't easily find a three square meter radiator, but if you did, it would get down to 35 degrees, which is only um, lukewarm really. Now it's, so it's still dissipating 1.7 kilowatts at a much lower temperature. Back to, oh, let's, uh, sorry, refresh the page. Back to where we were at 50 degrees again. So let's now compare a type of radiator. We've got a, a finned, a double radiator with fins inside. You may not see the fins, but they're in there. Um, let's go to an old single and it's jumped up to 88 degrees because that radiator isn't, um, shedding the heat so well, so it will get hotter. It'll, again, it, it'll get hotter in, in an attempt to get rid of that 1.7 kilowatts. It has to do that. So let's um, go back to where we were. Now let's consider the delta T, which is uh, always one that, that can be a bit confusing. Delta T is used for a, a few things, and it's also used, which may be confusing, in another way between the uh, temperature of the radiator compared to the room temperature. Let's just simulate that because if you're looking at radiator types, you'll often see the heat, heat output stated at delta T 50. And that means 50 degrees more than the room temperature. So if the room is 20, plus 50 is 70. So that means Let's just simulate, let's just get that radiated to 70 degrees. Here we are, about 70. I'm not worried about decimal points. This is all a um, little bit approximate. But that radiator, if three and a quarter kilowatts were going into it, going into it through the heater and through the, the um, pipe work, it would be, at 70 degrees, and it's giving off 3.25 kilowatts. But if we want this to work at a more heat pump friendly temperatures, which are lower temperatures, a heat pump won't like heating to 70 at all. So let's look, that was 3.2 kilowatts, 3, uh, three and a quarter kilowatts. If we want to get down to sort of 40 degrees, which is more heat pump friendly, then that radiator can only actually give off a kilowatt. So this is now I'm discussing here the um, the output of radiators at lower temperatures, which is something like a third that of a high output radiator. But be mindful, it doesn't mean that you need to have three times the radiator size compared to a boiler, because the boiler installation is probably designed to heat your room up quite quickly. So it's probably oversized. I mean, you're very rarely gonna have a, a radiator staying at 70 degrees for long. So if you are going to um, want to operate it at lower temperature to get a good COP, good efficiency on the heat pump, then you may choose to run the heat pump for longer, a longer time, meaning it heats up a bit slower. Um, but that's fine because the heat pump will be more energy efficient. Now then, let's go to this delta T. I got sidetracked. So at the moment we have um, 
about three degree rise from the, the return to the flow. Let's just see what happens because we haven't actually done this little test. Let's speed the thing right up. In fact, let's go to the maximum. I always discourage people from going sort of maximum to minimum, but I'm doing it myself. Um, but I'm just trying to show a point. Um, now then, the water is coming round from the radiator at 40. It's only rising by 0.7 of a degree. And it's coming out at 40.7, going back into the radiator. And it's easy to think, well, there's nothing happening here. There's, there's, there's no heat because there's no temperature rise. But if you think about it, there's a lot of water going through. So you wouldn't expect the water to rise very much. Um, now, this is working very efficiently. We've got one kilowatt going into the heater and we've got one kilowatt coming out of the radiator. Radius is 40 degrees. Um, great, working very well. Um, let's now try, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Let's, well, let's go to minimum. So now we're flowing very slowly. Again, what would you expect? Well, because the water is going through very slowly, you would expect it to rise quite a bit. We still have one kilowatt going into that water. The, the small amount of water that's going through is still getting a kilowatt. You'd expect it to rise that much. It's coming into the radiator at 47. It's cooling down as it goes across and it's dropping to 33. Now this radiator now won't be very even. So we'll tend to get a lot of that 47 degree hot water up here. Coming down here probably, we'll probably get a dead spot here. So the radiator isn't working too well, um, but it's still doing its thing. It's still giving off, um, it's gotta be giving off a kilowatt because we're putting a kilowatt into it. So let's go back to a sort of normal sort of thing. Now, with a heat pump, generally, we've got quite a small um, input here. Generally, we're working at sort of um, five degrees temperature difference, which gives a, a fairly good heat transfer across the system. Generally speaking, high, high flow rates are good. The only difference with a boiler is that if you have a condensing boiler, in fact, you may want this return to drop down in temperature because um, you want it to condense. And if we have a situation like this, where let's have a high flow, we've got a boiler. We've got a delta T of four degrees. So we've got um, one and a half kilowatts about going into this um, system. And the return is 46. Well, a condensing boiler I actually prefer, likes a lower return temperature because it can condense. So in that case, we would typically turn the flow rate, reduce the flow, reduce the speed of the pump. So we get up to whatever we like, maybe 11 degrees. The, the return has dropped right down to 43, which is good, good for condensing. So anyway, I've discussed plenty on this. Um, you can play around with it and sort of, you know, do little experiments. You can also go to your house and go to one of your radiators. Let's say you've got one that's 1.2 square meters. You don't have to worry about the delta T much here, the flow rate much. But you can say, okay, say it was a, it was a single radiator in a, in a room and you can have a look at it and say, well, okay, it, we've been running it quite hot, 60 degrees. You must be getting 85 watts, uh, sorry, 850 watts to that room. If we want to run it um, at sort of more heat pump friendly temperatures down at 40 degrees. Well, how much heat could we get out of it? 40 degrees, well, only 350 watts, it's less than half. So we can do little experiments and say, well, okay, let's fit a new radiator. Um, at 350 watts, gosh, it's less than 30 degrees. Well, that's great for efficiency, but um, can we get any more heat? Because we haven't got a bit more heat out. So 
no, we could maybe push it up to a kilowatt. So now we could get a kilowatt out of that 1.2 square meter radiator. Uh, it would run at 40 degrees, which would be nice and efficient for our heat pump. So you can do all these little things with it. Um, I think it, that is a secondary use to what my initial attention was just as a, as a sort of teaching aid, really. Because you can you can play with this and see what happens much easier than you can in real life, where things take a little while to change and um, you don't always have the opportunity to know what the flow rate is. Um, so there we are. There we have it. One little thing to say that the radiator sizes this is taken off um, an average of manufacturer's data. And just be mindful that a radiator that is very square or is slightly tall will give out a little bit less heat than one that is sort of spread out and sort of lower and wider. If you think about it, if you were to, you know, this is now at um, 29 degrees. Well, if you were to saw it in half across here and then put that section down to the left, then the radiator is sort of seeing better um, air in the room, so it works a little bit more efficiently. But you can just modify your area to compensate for that. And I think I'm going to leave it with you just to play around and discover whatever you're going to discover. Okay, that's bye for me. Bye.